In studio, we got a full house. All right, now the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, who has promised to jump out of a plane at the air show. <laughs> With or without a parachute. With or without a parachute, doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's an ornery old cuss. He's going to be fine either way. Delegate Mike Hornby. Good morning. Delegate John Hardy, Vice Chair of Finance. Just good hanging morning. out. Yeah. And uh, from the Boy Scouts of America, John Elliott is back. John, good morning to you. Well, uh, good morning, Rob. Good morning, guys. You made it to... Life, Life Scout? Life Scout, yes. The, Bill, you were an Eagle Scout? I was an Eagle. Mike, you were in Zimbabwe. Did they have any kind of 14. scouting? Yeah, I was a scout until about 14. 14? Uh, like John, I got interested in other things. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. when, I was, yeah. when I was in, I was all in, and yeah. when I was out, I was all out. <laughs> I, I definitely, uh, I had a great time in Scouts. I really did. I was, I was a wee below. That was yeah. the highest level. I learned how to use a reciprocating sword. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you did. <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> I don't think you got your I badge for that. I the badge, but I went through the process. <laughs> yeah, at 14, you're not allowed to do yeah. that at this point. We, we've got too many safety, and yeah. uh, at Guide to Safe Scouting won't let you get well, marked I tell you, Africa's later. a little different. I did, did lead a uh, bunch <laughs> of Cub Scouts on a four-day camping trip. We went out in the middle of bush in Africa. It was just... And was, how old were you? Wow, four, I was 14. And you led them? I led them. To 14? Yeah, wow. we had a great time. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> how many came back? We, we, all, we all came back, but we I think we got botulism or something like that. <laughs> we were pretty sick when we got back. So, so you're exaggerating when you said we had a great time. We did. We had a great time. Now, until, uh, did you worry about lions and? No, not so much lions. It was more you know the snakes, hyenas, uh, black mambas, you know hyenas. But no, we weren't. At, we weren't in the national parks. We were out out in the bush, just enjoying ourselves. Um, it was a good time. John, a few years ago, we honored this young man across the table from me as uh, the Boy Scouts uh, Man of the Year, so to speak. And you have uh, a couple from Jefferson County you're going to be honoring right now. Yes, we're getting ready to do our, our Jefferson dinner here. Uh, last month, we uh, did our Berkeley dinner and honored uh, Pete Mulford as uh, Bill's successor. Um, but this year, we're going to be honoring uh, Marty and Carol Cable over in Jefferson County. Tell us their story. Uh, they are lifelong residents of Jefferson County. Uh, been in agriculture for many, many years uh, with dairy cows and beef cattle and soybeans and you name it. They, they work with pretty much any organization over there. Uh, they have a 60-year track record of being involved in the community. Uh, and that's just since they became adults. Uh, so uh, they, they've been doing it all. Um, the Marty then ended up uh, as an auctioneer, in addition to the farming that the family still does. Uh, they've got an excavating company. Carol's been in real estate for many, many years and uh, with Cable Realty. And so that they've just been around uh, Jefferson. And uh, we were very glad when they said yes, they would allow us to honor them this year and uh, help support us to, to raise some money for scouting here in the Eastern Panhandle. Do either of you guys know there's the Cable Town District yeah. And Jefferson named after their family name? Yes, exactly right. That's where Marty was raised, and I he may still live there, I don't but yes, uh, named after the families. Oh, very nice. And, and and Marty also does the auctioneering for the hospice big event, big each year. So. Well, he, okay. he did the auction on Saturday night at WVU Medicine Children's uh, Gala for, for the new uh, children's hospital. So uh, Marty uh, – is an amazing man, and uh, they both are, yeah. and they've done okay. amazing things in the community. Awesome. When will the dinner be, John? Dinner is on Saturday, the 29th of April. We're going to be over at the racetrack this year. Um, last year, uh, right after COVID, we couldn't uh, arrange it in time to, to have it over there. Uh, but we're, we're back to the racetrack, uh, pretty much trying to get rid of all of our COVID thought processes and say, let's move on. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be at the racetrack on the 29th. Uh, social hour starts at 6, dinner at 6.30. Um, this year we're going to do something different. We're adding a little small uh, uh, silent auction to it. Uh, we're, we're actively looking for uh, things like gift cards to restaurants and experiences over there in uh, Jefferson County. Uh, there, there's so many places over there that we can look at. and uh, We find that... Uh, and experience is, is going a lot better than things these days. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's got their houses full. So yep. uh, it, we, we've already gotten some, uh, we, we've got some good coffee gift cards already on the table, uh, a couple restaurants involved, and uh, somebody, I thought it was neat, and it, it'll definitely create some experiences. A chess set from the bookstore over there in uh, Shepherdstown. So oh, cool. 
way to uh, get get involved and have some family fun. Did you see the Queen's Gambit on uh, Netflix by chance? I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed that yeah, series. That was, My wife and I uh, binged it uh, shortly after it came out. Yeah, that, that was an impressive series. It created quite an interest in chess. <laughs> it did. Afterward, right? Yeah. So whatever it takes to, to involve people and in keeping their minds sharp is a good thing. It's, it's part of what the scouts do. Sure. John, you mentioned uh, you know, COVID. Have the, have uh, scouting as a whole? Have have your numbers come back as far as participation membership since COVID? Are you seeing an uh, an increase in 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 members or, or interest in, in scouting? We are finally. It, okay. It's it's taken a while. Uh, in uh, twenty twenty two, uh, we we finally saw our, our an increase at the council level. Uh, we were up. Uh, I want to say five percent council wide. Um, but it hadn't fully hit the Eastern Panhandle at that point. Uh, just was looking at numbers again this morning. Uh, we have grown as a council, which includes the three counties here in the Eastern Panhandle, six counties in Virginia, plus Winchester City. Uh, we've grown 86 members so far this year. Well, that's good stuff. Out, out of, of that many, 86. Out of how many, John? Uh, we're at a total of around 1,000. Okay, fine. Thank you. John. Well over. Out of the 86, 40 are here in the Eastern Panhandle. So the Eastern Panhandle is coming back strong this year. That's wonderful. Are you still taking groups to Camp Rock Enon and for summer uh, camps up there? It, and... Yes. I, I, I was in fact at Camp Rock Enon Saturday. We had our big uh, Scouts Adventure Day where they were doing all sorts of things and uh, training our trading post manager for the summer, uh, who also happens to be my daughter. So I got to spend <laughs> the day with her. It was really cool. Um, speaking but, of, uh, speaking of you mentioned your daughter, what percentage yes. of the Boy Scouts out there now are female? It's still very small. It's the five or six. Uh, but while we're talking Jefferson County, we finally started our first girl troop in Jefferson County oh. three weeks ago. And you had a Monday. female Eagle Scout uh, we interviewed a couple of years ago. Yeah. Or and she ago. spoke at Bill's dinner last yeah. year. Yeah. Very impressive yeah. young lady. She, she was awesome. You know, doesn't West Emily. Virginia have a distinct honor of, of hosting the Jamboree like every four years? Every four years. And it's always in West Virginia, right? I, at this point, it has moved That's to right. the Summit Bechtel Reserve down uh, near Beckley in Glen Jean, Virginia. Fantastic. And I've, I've um, been to that facility. That is a phenomenally large facility uh, that can really take on a lot of campers, a lot of scouts, a lot of logistics. Uh, for what, what is it used for in between the four years, John, do you know? Uh, they, they've got summer camp programs so every you are year using it continually. As, as a summer camp. They have off-season camping. They've got a full convention center and training center. In fact, uh, in the first week of May, I'm going to be down there uh, doing a training class, uh, spend a week down at the summit and have some fun. I, I haven't had a chance to go there yet, and they've been open now for almost 10 years. And is, it lim- is it limited to Boy Scouts, or can other groups take advantage oh, of the Other groups take advantage as well. Yeah. And there's also Boy Scouts from international travel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come from in, all in, over the world to come to that. To that. Yeah. In 2019, uh, the summit actually hosted the um, every five years World Jamboree. Yes, it hosted the World Jamboree. It hosted the whole that's World the one, Jamboree. That's the one that I went yeah. to yeah. Yeah, in 2019. John, why do you do what you do? I started back in the mid 90s. My son was encouraged to join the Weeblos. And the leader sent home a letter saying, we got this camping trip coming up. Den's grown. It's awesome. Problem is, we need one more parent. I said, you know, I was young and dumb and did it as a kid. I can do this for one weekend. And the weekend just has never ended. (laughs) This weekend, I got out there and I saw there were 185 scouts registered for Adventure Weekend. And I got to watch them run around, heard them laugh, saw them engaged, outdoors, breathing the clean air, learning new stuff. Um, They got to climb on the rock wall. They got to shoot various different types of uh, firearms, including we've got our cowboy action shooting now that gets them a chance to shoot the shotgun, a rifle, and a pistol all at one fell area. And It's just so neat to see them learning and experiencing the outdoors that way. And every time I get tired, I look and I hear those kids laugh and I come back. Yeah, that's an interesting point. (laughs) You know, I have a kind of a similar story in that when my oldest son was, I think, four or five, and he signed up his first little sport was T-ball. And then 
and then soccer, and they sent out a thing that said, we need volunteers, uh, sign up for something. I signed up to be timekeeper, and six years later, I was running the entire league with 1,300 kids, 2,500 parents, 200 coaches, quarter-million-dollar budget. I'm like, I signed up to be a timekeeper. How'd this happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. my son, who was in the wee blows, is now 35. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah but when you're helping, when you're helping kids, oh, yeah. uh, that's, that's something that uh, pays off for society. You make a better you make a better citizen when you when you make a a kid who's happy. Oh, you do, and it definitely happens that way. And it, it only took him twenty five years to get me to give up my amateur status and go pro, and <laughs> and made this my profession, and and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Well, I think it's a very important service that you're providing that you're being involved with. I mean, I'll be 50 this year, and I look back, and I can still remember my time that I spent at Camp Rock Enon, some of the winter jamborees that we would do in, like, January when it was just, you know, freezing cold, and we were camping in old Baker tents, and yep. and, uh, and I was I was in the OA and, yep. and going through the ordeal, and, and, I, and, you know, that was a long, long time ago, and I still remember the those times and the people that I did that with. So uh, thank you very much for being involved in the organization and keeping the organization moving and john made a very uh, critical point a few minutes ago the kids get out and interact among themselves they get away from the computers they get away from the xbox they get away they they get out and do what we did as we were kids many many years ago well and you say get away from the the video games and xbox actually we started this two years ago and continue to do it um thursday night during summer camp we have a video game tournament. Fantastic. So they're still working together, yeah. but they're also doing one of the things they truly enjoy. We set up a big screen on the, the outside of one of our buildings, set the game up there. Uh, first week we tried it, we actually had it in one of our big buildings. Just got too loud, you couldn't think in there, so we moved it outside. Uh, and we just, they, they pick a game that's good for anybody. I think they've been playing Smash Bros. Re recently. Mm -hmm. um, and just having a blast. Well, John, you think back you, to your, your youth, was there anything better than those camping trips you went on when yeah. you were a kid? Huh? No. Is there anything better? And I, I think, you know, when you look at society, I love the, the outdoors, things like that. But John, how has scouting changed because society has changed, like like you said, video oh, yeah. games, things like that. What other types of things that have you adapted to, to to meet these kids' needs? I mean, just finding what interests them. In addition to the video game tournament that we do for fun, we're teaching things like robotics, um, animation, art. We're doing a lot more computer related things as merit badges that we're offering at our summer camp. Um, we are teaching the types of skills that they need not only to survive in the world in general. We've got a cyber chip requirement at every age level. Because the digital technology is out there, we want them to be able to do it safely. And at the younger ages especially, this is a product they have to go through with their parent each year to recertify so they know at an age-appropriate level what to be doing when they're online. Fantastic. How to keep them safe. So uh, those are the things. We're, we're taking what's out there and we're, we're running with it while still keeping to the old standbys that have the duty to God, duty to others, and duty to the country. April 29, the Boy Scouts will uh, honor the cables in uh, Jefferson County at the Charlestown Racetrack. Yes, How do you get tickets for that, John? Um, you can go to the, the website is uh, JC. DCD stands for Jefferson County Distinguished Citizens Dinner 23.givesmart.com. 